All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you happen to be. My name is Christopher Harrison. This is Web Wednesday, the show where we bring on some really cool and talented people to talk about all things web dev. Uh, now, it feels a little bit weird. Um, it's it's certainly going to be, I think, a little bit of a struggle to try and get back into the flow. It's been about like a month and a half now since we've done a show, but I'm really excited for the two guests. I think they're going to just help drive us through everything and in particular for the topic. So if you're anything like me, and I know I am, I, I, I will openly admit I really struggle with CSS. And I don't think that this is an uncommon thing for many, many developers that we sort of like know just enough on how to put things in different places. We, we you know, we might be pretty good at selectors. And then after that, the rest of it is, is sort of just like voodoo and magic. And then we immediately go running off to something like Bootstrap or um, Tailwind or something like that, which is of course not in any way, shape or form to downgrade those uh, those frameworks, they're wonderful, but uh, it'd be also kind of really good for all of us as web developers to have a better understanding of CSS. And so as a result, I'm really jazzed to be joined today by both Ro and Annie, who have spent an awful lot of time getting up to speed on CSS and building some really cool, really pretty, really unique things with CSS. So first up, thanks to, to the both of you for joining. No We're glad to be here. Yay. Excellent. Yay. I love this. I love the energy. So uh, the way that I always like to uh, start the show is by asking, you know, how it is that each of you became who you are and how you got to, to where you are. Maybe a little bit about like, you know, what got your interest in uh, in CSS. So I'm going to start with Ro. I've known Ro for uh, a, a bit. We uh, actually um, had a great conversation with, uh, with Chloe um, about mm -hmm. her past. But uh, Ro, how did you become Come row, how did you get to where you are? Yeah, so basically I started back in 2018 with a uh, little bit of curiosity towards web development, but didn't really know what it was. So I was able to ask around and meet some people who were web developers. And through there, I was introduced to my boot camp, which is Juno College. And after completing the school uh, in the year 2020, I started to job hunt and met a lot of amazing people on Twitter and through the community there. And then I landed my amazing job at E by Design, and uh, that was in uh, April of 2021. And I have been there ever since, learning and growing, and absolutely loving it. So. That's, yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. And Annie, how did you become Annie? Yeah, that's a really open-ended question. But um, <laughs> well, I actually graduated with a degree in multimedia design. So I was a designer. I had zero interest in code. I'm just going to put that out there. I did learn HTML and CSS at uni, and I had to throw out my designer career um, code, like basic websites and stuff. But I absolutely like disliked it. It was just something that I had to do um, because it was, you know, the bread and butter of what I had to do. Um, so I worked as a designer for several years in Australia and England and London. And then I went to Japan and taught English for several years, came to Toronto, where I am now. And I thought, OK, I'm going to jump back into design. It's going to be really easy. I love design. I'm going to get back into it. But the landscape had really changed by the time I got back. Um, after several years in Japan. So I really struggled to get work and I was just working like three jobs and it was just really, just really, really horrible basically. So I started looking into alternatives and one of the things that came up was boot camps. And I thought, okay, with my background, maybe I'll do a UX boot camp. But I found Juno College, which is incidentally the same boot camp that Roy went to, but I actually went in a little bit earlier. I graduated from the immersive bootcamp course in summer 2019. Um, had my first job at a WordPress agency. And now I'm in my second role as a the front end engineering lead at Pastel, which is a really cool startup. There's only five of us, but I'm loving it. 
That's fantastic. I love that. And I'm also like really jazzed to have the the, the two of you on and 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 myself included because I have I, I have a non-traditional background that I didn't graduate from from a four-year um, um, college for sort of a, a whole host of, uh, of reasons. But like this service is once again proof that you do not need to have a four-year CS degree to have a successful CS career. That Absolutely. if if you know find your own path and if that path is going through a boot camp or being self-taught or other Otherwise, that you can absolutely have success going down that path. So it's it's great to have the two of you representing uh, that uh, that as well here. Always happy to. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So um, the first question that I always love to kind of start with when uh, we're talking about whatever technology is basically like, what is insert technology? So let's start with this. What is CSS? Mm. CSS stands for cascading style sheets. <laughs> okay. And what do I, what, what would I use CSS for? Yeah. So the way I always kind of like to explain things is using the kind of framework of a house. So I feel like in web development, there's three building blocks. There's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And if you think of HTML as the structure of your house, it's the beams, it's the wood panels, it's like the bricks that you're building. Um, that's the base layer and that's what HTML is. When you add CSS, that's like adding the decorations. It's adding you know, the, the paint on the wall, it's the colors. You're starting to bring it to life a little bit and you're adding like um, all the fun decorative things that also takes into account um, how you function in the house, how you move around the house and everything in, in code sense, that's how you interact with the website. And once you add JavaScript on top of that, that's adding the interaction, like the lights and the plumbing. And that's kind of the analogy um, when I think about those three things. So CSS kind of sits in the middle of the HTML and the JavaScript. Okay. All right. So that, and, and that's a great analogy. And I love that you really sort of like, no pun intended here, kind of painted a picture, um, which I, <laughs> I, I really dig. Um, my follow up to that would be, you know, what would you tell to a web developer that maybe like has been like avoiding CSS has been like, you know, I'm not 100% certain or, you know, I don't always feel like it's doing what I expect it to do, like those types of things. What would you tell a, a developer to, to help them like go, hey, you need to kind of just kind of keep working at it and eventually it will make sense. Ro, do you want to take this one? Yeah, because uh, I actually mentor for Intro to Web Dev at my school now and a lot of the times I see my students pulling their hair out being like, I just don't get this. Why? And number one, just patience, because there's a lot of different moving parts that come with CSS. And it may seem like maybe the easy part, but it's not because there's a whole bunch that goes into it. Um, so I think when you first start looking at start very basic, start very small. So I have friends sometimes who are interested in learning code and I'm like, let's start at the bare bones. So I'll be like, okay, literally write H1, hello world. Now make that turn green. And it's just as simple as targeting your H1 and setting the color to green and start going from there, which sounds very, very basic, but that's how you learn. And that's how you grow and build upon it. Mm -hmm. So just start simple and then just sort of kind of keep expanding on from, uh, from there. Yeah, okay, because when I started in boot camp, I always wanted to do the biggest, coolest thing. But in order to understand, you need to start small. And even if you feel like, oh, this is so easy, this will help you with progressing even smoother. <laughs> it will make so much more sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I, I, I can get behind that. And I also think that's just like good advice for programming and in general is, you know, <laughs> yeah. start start here and then build yourself up. That's so frequently I'll, I'll be talking to somebody who's like brand new into coding and they want to, you know, build this really complex ML model. I'm like, hey, you know what? That's a fantastic goal to have, <laughs> but that's a great like long term goal to have, like kind of start here um, and then build your way up. So I think that's mm -hmm. that's a perfect approach then for, for CSS as uh, yeah. as well. And I will say for CSS, it's actually a very underrated and valuable skill to have because in the front end, when you look at things that break on the UI, on the user interface, a lot of it, if not all of it, is due to CSS. 
So having an understanding of how to debug CSS, how Flexbox works, how the box model works, and um, cascading styles, like all of those skills are extremely useful in able, like being able to debug a lot faster and fixing problems on the front end. So I think it's extremely like valuable and underrated. Okay. So, and at the risk of, of, of putting one of the two of you um, on, on the spot, um, since, since you mentioned box model, I'm going to ask you the question, um, what is the box model in CSS? You want to take this one? Okay. The way I think about the box model is when you think of the, um, the DOM, the document object model, which is how like the browser represents the web, I guess. Is that the way? Can I say that? Okay. Anyway, they're all boxes. Everything that you see with your layout and everything is like is all in boxes. So when you break down a web page, um, all the elements on the web page, from your headers to your paragraphs to your images, they all come in boxes. The box model is um, when you have a a element on the DOM. Um, there's things, there's like kind of three things to be aware of. There's padding, there's the um, border, and then there's margin or padding border margin. And when you think about the a box, um, say, okay, I guess the good analogy is say your body is the element <laughs> and then you have a coat on. Between like your body and your coat is the margin. Your border is the coat. And then padding is the space between you and like the that's your personal space. So between you and somebody else. So I would say like that maybe is a good analogy of the okay. box model. I work yeah. in analogies, so <laughs> No, I, I, I can absolutely get on board with that. I dig that. Okay. All right. So uh, over on, on Twitch, um, OFX asks a question, which we sort of like um, answered, but I think it's like a perfect lead in to what it is that we're going to be talking about here. Uh, but the question is, is in your opinion, what is the best way to learn CSS? Is it by making vanilla projects? Is it by using CSS frameworks? Or is it by doing fun stuff like a CSS drawing? For me, I like the drawing, but that's, that's maybe it's bias. I also think which is something that I'm hoping to share a little bit of. Uh, I always think it's fun to learn through games because it's unforgettable. It's You don't think you're, you're forcing your brain to learn something. It's more so like, I'm just having fun and oh, wow, all of a sudden I know Flexbox. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my opinion. I don't know if Annie has a different one, but... <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think learning vanilla CSS is the best way to go about it because once you have an understanding of how vanilla CSS works, you it's a lot easier to understand, you know, bootstrap and foundation and all of those other things. And again, like going back to debugging, then you're able to debug them a lot easier. Um, very early on when I didn't really understand Flexbox and, you know, all those other things, the way I started learning um, CSS was literally taking a piece of UI and just building it. Like it could be the Twitter login screen, or it could be um, like something that I found on one of those free websites. Another interesting exercise that I did was getting a magazine layout and then interpreting that into CSS. Oh, and interesting. Using, yeah, using um, Google Fonts to just match the closest font. And after that, like CSS art came in a lot later into the picture, but I did definitely learn a lot about different properties and stuff um, from CSS art that I didn't learn while just building out UI and animation and that kind of stuff related to that. Okay. All right. I also, I, I really kind of like the, the two approaches of row of, you know, hey, I want to get in, I want to have fun. And then <laughs> Annie, kind of the more, you know, let's start with vanilla, then grow from there. So I, I really dig that, you know, and kind of once again, like find what, what what's going to connect with you and then follow that path and and uh, and go from there. Um, I, uh, I dig that. So we are here to talk about like CSS art in particular um, uh, and use this as a way to like really kind of start to dig in a little bit of CSS and, and show off some of the different things that uh, that you can do with that. So uh, Ro, I know you've got a couple of things that uh, that you wanted to, to show off. So why don't we start there um, sure. and uh, and some of the things that you can do with uh, with CSS. Absolutely. Just one second, please. 
Can you see? There we go. Everything okay, cool. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> so I don't know if you can also see me right now, but basically yep. this very unhappy looking blob is actually a character <laughs> from Sanrio named Gudetama, which I dearly love. And uh, he is a lazy egg. And um, this is him in CSS form. So <laughs> what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to save this here. And he basically bounces in. He just kind of pops up. Hello. You know, that's Gudutama. And the reason why I wanted to throw that small animation in is because there's a couple of tools that you could use if you're very, very new to this and don't really know where to start. So we're going to take a peek at the code right here. And it's worth highlighting, so, you don't have any JavaScript at all in this. This is all just a bit of HTML and then the CSS. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, this is just CSS, HTML, and CSS. Okay. <laughs> so CSS animations. But essentially, if you look at the code here, uh, this is just your basic HTML setup. Um, and then here is like a CSS set up as well. It kind of like resets uh, elements that have additional properties that onto it automatically. But how I made this is I started with very basic uh, need to make a wrapper so that your item is centered. So I used a wrapper just over here. It's a max width of 1260 pixels with the 80% and margin of auto or zero auto. And a flex container. So I flexed it to the center. Now we're good. And you all know how to center a good like that. <laughs> now, <laughs> moving on to the actual body, which is this lovely little lump named Gudetama. Um, it's nothing too fancy schmancy. It's just a half circle and a face. But that's what we need for an egg. It's just a little half face. So as you see here, I have a div with a class of egg half and egg half round. And I'll get to the other two uh, class names later because that's actually something that creates the animated part. So for egg half, I have a background which gives us the color. And because I wanted to add a little bit of shading on the side, it's so minimal. I don't know if you can see it here on the left. Mm -hmm. I added this linear gradient. We create a width and a height we give it a border and position of absolute because we want his face to be able to stick to that part. So I'm going to make it bigger again so you can see like all this. It won't move around. It won't shift. It'll be the same face, lovely face for all to see. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, where to begin? Now, um, real quick question. What's that linear gradient they're doing? Yeah. So basically it's providing that small little shade over here. Like it kind of like blends in different colors. So there's this yellow and then there's this little orange because Gudetama in the image I was referencing, he had a little bit of an orange highlight on the side. Um, but because I want this to be catered to someone who is like, well, I don't know how to do things with linear gradient. How do I even get started? They learn tools. So I'm going to quickly bounce over to here and I'm going to show you this. This is called CSS gradient. And it is a tool that literally does that for you. And I really like that because if I didn't know and I needed help, this is where I would start. And you can drag this so you can adjust the amount of gradient that's being led through depending on how much you want. Now, I okay. only wanted a little, so I left it at here. Um, yeah. And that's just I, at cssgradient.io. And so you're just kind yeah. of going in, configuring that with a GUI, and then now mm -hmm. you're able to just copy and paste the code, I'm guessing? Absolutely. That's it. So I believe, where is it? Just at the bottom here, it'll display for you. And you can just copy and paste. That's it. Um, don't need both. I just stuck with this one. And that is what created his color. Um, also wanted to mention if you're referencing something like this Gudetama egg, you can use a tool that's easily uh, downloadable to your browser, like a browser extension. I have one, it's called Page Color Picker. 
And if I click on uh, color picker, I can use this, or I can actually click anywhere on the browser and add that hex code to my code. So it makes it a lot easier to get the color that you're looking for exactly. I really dig that. Uh, that was cssgradient.io. Yeah. And what I also, I, 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 what, what, what I like there is sort of like highlighting the fact of like, hey, you're not going in and just manually setting, you know, RGB hex values, that you're using <laughs> yeah. a tool to go generate that for you, that you just don't have those memorized off the top of your head. Exactly. Um, another tip that I always start with is because like, you know, some people may know I am a digital artist, so art is essentially shapes. And when you want to start with something, uh, start small and then scale up or down depending. So for this, I wouldn't necessarily know what the width or height would be off the top of my head. I would have to toy around. I usually start with the width and height of, for example, 500 by 500, because then it makes a perfect square. And then referencing that photo you're trying to imitate, you can adjust your width or height based on eye and you can go up or down in numbers. Um, so that's how you end up with the width of height that matches. Because I think that matches the shape of this little guy. Sure, close <laughs> enough. Yeah, we'll go with yeah. that. <laughs> and then moving forward, uh, I want to discuss the animate part because again, there are people who maybe don't know how to do CSS animations. That's totally cool. I don't know how to do CSS animations. So this, shout out to my school for introducing me to this. Um, I discovered this recently. Um, this is animate.style. And this automatically has all these different styles, um, not styles, but animations that are ready for you to use. Like, as I'm clicking on these different uh, names, uh, the animate in the center is mimicking what the are trying to create. And oh, okay. I think that's really amazing because if someone really doesn't know, this is, as it says, just add water CSS animations. And I think it's so <laughs> cool. Um, I appreciate that there's one called Jello. I know. I like Jello. <laughs> Jello is cool. But yeah, so I kind of wanted Gutama to do like a little surprise pop up thing. So I really liked the bounce in and up entrance. And that's exactly what he does. If I Minimize this, and then okay. there you go. Bounce in and out. And <laughs> you don't have to import anything. All you have to do, well, actually, let me double check. No, you do have to. <laughs> you can either do it with NPM, <laughs> or I did it like this because I'm trying to show you bare bones beginner if you really don't even know how to do NPM. That's fine. It's totally OK. Start small and work your way up. You can just take this link and throw it into your head inside of your index. And then from there, you have access to adding this all in. So you start with animate, animated. That's kind of like turning it on. And then select the one that you want. So bounce in and up. Oh, OK. So so this you didn't actually have to create that animation CSS on your own. You're just using, you're using a framework here. Exactly. OK. Again, I think it's really interesting to show people that you don't have to know everything in order to create what you have in your mind but want to get out and don't know how to get it out. Because there's so much to learn. And uh, this is like a good way to inch towards it and then eventually learn more on it. I, I I really dig that. And what I also, I, I love the fact that you highlight like, hey, you know what, this is this is the stuff that I know how to do and this is the stuff I want to focus in on. So this I'm going to build, I'm going to use a couple of tools here to help me out. But then there's this other stuff like the animation where sure I could do it, but it's going to be easier if I just, you know, use something that somebody else has already got. So I'm just going to use that framework, import that in and away you go. So I, I, yeah. I really dig that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I also really enjoy this because you know what? I know there's, when I was starting out, I didn't really know what I was doing at all. And knowing that there's tools that are readily available for me to use at that beginning point is really helpful to help me advance. Um, and another thing, I'm sure some of you are wondering how he got a little round at the top there. So pretty simple, actually. It's um, the egg half round uh, class that I have over here, uh, <laughs> you're able to create that by essentially making Photoshop, uh, 
border top left radius and setting it to 50%. If I remove these, which I will, you see that it becomes a straight up square. <laughs> and now we have tomago, which is delicious, but not what we're looking for. So we go back here and he's round again. And if we were to essentially just do a uh, border radius 50%, it would be a full circle. So this is kind of a way to target individual corners. And in this case, it's the top left and the top right. So now we have a half shape. So I dig um, that. Mm -hmm. So I just with with that up real quick, um, um, uh, Robert France, uh, sorry, Robert Francois Trudeau um, asked a question uh, about um, having been out of CSS for like ten years and wonder oh, wow. if things had had evolved. And I, I know that the border that's it's one of the things I do and I had to do in, in CSS. Yeah. I know that the uh, the the border radius is relatively new. That that came in just like uh, relatively like maybe five years ago, something like that, but it is a relatively new CSS. So some of, uh, some of the different things that are here are, are, are new to, to that question. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. The thing is I've been around for two years now, so. I, it, I, and <laughs> and that's all I right. <laughs> <laughs> you still know far more about CSS than I do. So it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> but truly, like I said, like, it really is just shapes, putting them together and saying, ah, that looks like a thing. That's great. <laughs> but, yeah, so moving okay. on to the next little bit, which is his eyes. Because you're probably wondering, well, how, how are they slanted to kind of emulate this, you know, like sad kind of grumpy looking face that he has? Because he's lazy. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't want to do the work. He just wants to chill. So basically what you have to do It's my is, spirit animal. I know he really is mine too. I love Lee Thomas so much. Um, I added two divs inside of this other div. So this is what I call divception. So we have tons of divs, but it's okay because it's just we're making a face. So if I were to take these divs and have it outside of it, they would not be inside of that face. It would just be off to the side. But we have a div with the class of I left and another with I right. So we have a left eye and a right eye. Now, I wanted to just have the same type of uh, properties assigned to the eye itself. So I did it for both these here. I selected them both and gave everything that it needed, including position absolute, so that it would be absolute on the face. Um, and you're able to do that by just, so So you, the, the, the Connotation for a class is having that dot and then the name of the class, and then you've got a mm -hmm. comma between them, and so that's allowing you to apply the style to both of the classes. That's okay. correct. And if, for example, I wanted to throw an H1 in there, I would have to throw in another comma and H1 with no period or anything. It would right. just be on its own. Okay. So, yeah. Then cool. to actually make it rotate and set it into the position that I want it to, I use top and left since it has position absolute uh, on. And then I used a thing called transform and rotated it by 160 degrees. Um, I basically did the same thing on the other side. I gave it 100 pixels on the right. I thought that that looked a little bit more in place, but maybe 75 would be okay too, just a little bit off to the side, which I don't want. And it's the mm -hmm. same thing, but negative instead because it's the opposite way. So okay. that's his eyes. And pretty much almost done here with Budatama, but his mouth was probably the trickier part. As someone who likes to perfect things, it really pained me that I couldn't make his mouth more round at the edges like this. It has kind of like a boxy curve, but you know what? We made it work. He still is doing the thing that he does, which is looking lazy and tired. And... Um, <laughs> I basically just set a background color of white, so that is deep or white. And I did the same thing as before, where I combined the use of position absolute, the border radius, and I adjust the, uh, the mouth using top and right. And then I was able to give the shape using height and width. And that is pretty much for the top. And okay. Yeah. It was, uh, just a nice little egg. Very cool. 
Um, so yeah. an another real quick question. So on the transform, um, so you have transform mm -hmm. rotate. Um, I, do you know the other ones? And I, I, you know, off the top of your head, and if you don't, then that's fine. Um, but what is like, are, are there other transforms that you're able to do in there? Yeah, there definitely are. Not off the top of my head, though. If I were to do this, it'll give me a list so you can see I can all name the different few. kinds. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. There you so go. These will show you. There's 3D, which I've never touched into. I know uh, there's a amazing CSS artist, Jay, who does a lot of 3D stuff. It's super cool. Um, yeah, maybe that's how they do that. And yeah. So okay. There are all the different kinds. Translate is a really useful one. Yeah. But for me, just a little rotate. Very simple stuff. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And b by the way, it's worth highlighting that uh, that you're using uh, uh, both Code Swing, which is a great uh, extension in mm -hmm. uh, in VS Code, and you're using VS Code. So that's giving you that bit of IntelliSense there to show you yeah. the the different options that are available. Oh, I love IntelliSense. It's so intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. Uh, yeah. So this is the egg. Um, I also have a CSS art that I did a long time ago. It's uh, Fit the Human uh, from Adventure Time. And I could share that now or I could share it later, but that is one that I would love to share because it was a lot of fun. It was a little bit more complicated, but it's the same essential things where you have just a bit more pieces and um, you're just sticking it all together and making it work. <laughs> why don't Why don't you go ahead and and, and share that um, um, real quick? Only because I know that Annie is going to introduce Sass, um, which yes. is um, going to be like sort of like the 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 next step, the TypeScript, if you will, of mm -hmm. uh, of, of CSS. Um, yeah. So I think that that's like kind of of, of keeping those separate is going to be perfect. So why don't you show the the next one as well that uh, that you've got there? Absolutely. So. Here is Fid the Human, for those of you who know, it's from Adventure Times. I uh, made this when I just finished boot camp, so I was just having a lot of fun with it, and um, I realized that I could take these shapes, just like an art, put them together using code, and voila, you have yourself a character. Um, the background is not made with CSS, it is a GIF, and it's just like the I think it's the outro credits where the little bee flies around and butterflies. But yeah, basically the same thing, except as you can see, there's a lot more divs, a lot yeah. more happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's why I wanted to show you something small with like Glutatama because it really is a lot. Um, I, I'm not going to go through each one, obviously, because that's going to take a while. Uh, we'd be here for a bit. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, as you can see, the same thing. Like I, <laughs> I just finished the but I, I, I even put in my reset here for everything, even though as you can see, it's just a dip. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, yeah, I think maybe I can look into maybe the hand. That was the hardest part for me. The hand on the left over here. Okay. So I'm just gonna quickly pull up left hand because. And, okay, so you start off with left hand and left hand here too. In the HTML, you start with a div of left hand. Just like with Glutatama, you started off with a half egg. You have a left hand and it's just over here. I had it basically so it was like a half arm and then I attached the fingers individually so you see hands line thumb finger one two and three <laughs> the cartoon characters <laughs> only have four fingers um so yeah i i basically did the same thing where i just did the width and height i used position absolute um some background color i was able to get uh the hex code by just color dropping a picture of finn and same thing here i used a transform i was told by some uh people from Twitter that Finn was not looking okay. Like on their screen, he was all over the place. So I had to add in all these additional little bits <laughs> so that it worked on everybody's browser. Um, 
So I, just a real quick, so kind of going back to the, the question that Robert had asked about, you know, uh, kind of what's new. So one of the things is, of course, you know, different browsers are going to uh, be introducing different features and different functionality. So those are all mm-hmm. vendor specific tags and you typically don't need them these days, but every now yeah. and then. <laughs> yeah, this was the one time uh, I was really surprised, but it's okay because this was what fixed it and I was very happy about that. Um, and also another thing too to consider um, when you're trying to make like more of like an, uh, a seamless uh, appearance, uh, you can remove some borders. So if I remove this, I think we will see what I'm expecting. Let me see. One second. No, that's not what I was expecting. Never mind. What I was <laughs> going to say though is that if you apply something like border bottom none, it targets something that is like creating a line where you don't want it to be so mm. if you look here like there's like a small line i was expecting it to show a border again but maybe i use something like z index to cover it a little bit and so you can't see the change but if you had that still there there would probably be a very dark line which is not what you want to make the appearance of a whole forearm <laughs> and yeah I think okay kind of it for Finn because I don't want to go in forever. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Cool. And if you wanted to, I could also show you the Flexbox Zombies game super quick or I could save that as a link for later. Why don't we save that one as, as, as a link for later because we've got about 24 minutes. I want to make sure that we still got time for, for Annie. And if, if we have time towards the end, then we can we can go to that. I also know you have a Daria one as well. I'm a huge yes. Daria fan. Um, <laughs> which, by the way, that show ages so well. It is, it's, it is it's still just as funny and just as relevant today as it was um, yeah. back 20-some uh, years ago. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, Annie, uh, so, yes. and, and thank you for all of that, Rose. That was all fantastic. Um, so yeah, so Annie, um, you're going to be working with uh, with SAS. So uh, first question: What mm-hmm. is SAS? So SAS, you can think of SAS like advanced CSS. It's a post processor, pre processor. I think it's a pre processor of CSS where it adds extra functionality on top of. Uh, of top of CSS, so you can have like, variables like in JavaScript, and you can have different functions and stuff. So it's a very, very powerful way to write CSS, and which it then compiles into basic CSS for the browser. But I know, like sometimes when you write plain CSS, you have to write so many different things, right? <laughs> yeah. So SAS is amazing for that because you can take all those things that you rewrite over and over again, put into a function, spit it out. Or use variables like I think you saw maybe some of um, some of the code that Ro was sharing like with the with the um, colors. So she had to write the colors like by hand each time. But imagine you can save those colors into variables and then just use like the name of the color each time, and it's all saved. And it's very very powerful, and it makes writing CSS a lot faster. That you you had me at variables like that <laughs> right there is is fantastic. Um, so it does sound though like you do need a tool that's then going to convert that into um, into CSS. So it is and yes. and and it is worth highlighting that it is still CSS that's going to be sent down to the browser. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, it, so you don't have to worry about you know does this browser support SAS or doesn't it because it's not SAS that the browser is going to be looking at. So you do need a tool that's then going to handle that uh, that conversion. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's, let's, let's take a look then. Okay. So this is a little bit different from, um, what Ro was showing with lots of, um, divs when she was making her CSS, um, art, but if you can look over here, this style, this is what variables look like for colors. Um, I put a dollar sign and then B, B is for black. And then I've saved this color um into this variable and then in the css or in the sas i can actually just write b like dollar sign b and it will convert it into sas but let me give a bit of background before i do that this um type of css art is just art that i created using just one div so everything you see here is literally just one div um i was very much inspired by a very famous 
very popular artist called Lynn Fisher. She's amazing. Her work is amazing. I'm just going to quickly show you stuff that she's done called a single div.com. Everything that she's created here is using one div. So you can really kind of understand how powerful, like knowing how to use CSS is. Um, and you can yeah create these amazing, amazing artworks. So to do this, to create one div art, the two kind of important things that you will learn is basically using gradients and layering. Sorry, my cat is here. He wants to join in the call, go away your first. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I use to make this one div art, he, okay, bye. <laughs> 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 he never fails. He will always join when there's a call. Um, but the way I did this over here, you can see there's a lot of radio gradients over here. And further down, there's probably some linear, like there's a linear gradient here. And what you do with one div art is that even though on the DOM, you have just one div, you're using pseudo elements, which is the before and after. And that essentially gives you two extra elements to work with. So how I created this what was, what is a pseudo element? You know that's a really good question. I never really thought about that. A pseudo element is Ro, do you have an answer for that one? I kind of know how to describe it. I don't know yeah. like the perfect definition, but when you're using a pseudo element, it's like you have this blank slot where you can then almost have like a ghost shape that is the before and after. You apply okay. these settings. So, like for example, let's say you have like one uh, thing that you're applying. Uh, mm, say like a div with a class named egg, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you start off with that. Okay, that's fine. You add your styles to that class. You move on to the next one, and you can do egg, and then there's a double colon, and then you could do before. You would start with a uh, empty colon and then apply the styles there, and then all of a sudden you have access to as another shape. It's a okay. Bar. Yeah. So it's, it's basically like it's sort of like creating. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 like it's creating something that's that's going to exist like just before, or just after that element. In in the case of yeah. after and before. Okay. All right. Yeah, that exactly. makes sense. Yeah. So your elements are like extra functionality you get with um, CSS or HTML that doesn't. Yeah, it's just like a ghost. You can add it on top. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I take it. All right. <laughs> so the way I created this is the back and the basic shape is just the one div. But here's the before pseudo element. And I put a lot of comments when I code because it just makes it so much easier if I go back a year later and I don't know what's going on. Because like if you look at this, it's just like a bunch of radio gradients and linear gradients. Like what is going on there? But if I just comment this out the front, you can see that if I take that away, it automatically, it's taken away the border um, of this iPad over here. And I've used the after pseudo element to create my screen. So if I take that away, comment that out, you can see that's just what that looks like. Now, I'm going to put back the front so you can see what it looks like without the screen. I'm going to comment that back in. And this is actually what the front looks like. So the way you create um, CSS art using one div, or in, in fact, any CSS art as well, is using gradients and linear gradients, and you're layering on stuff on top. So once I took away the screen, you can see that it looks literally like this, like it doesn't look like much, but once I layer back the screen, then that's covering all this stuff over here, and it looks like a very hyper-realistic um, hyper iPad Pro. So yeah, so that's the basis of how it works. It's literally chaining and layering the radio gradients, the gradients, um, which are the two main functions, like CSS functions, onto the background property. And you can, you know, use this trick. And if you're just working with normal um, in your day-to-day -day dev job, you can use this trick to add details to a button or render things without adding more elements to the DOM. And that's very, very useful to, to do. Just going to go in a little bit more um, just to give you a bit more detail. Now, if you have a look at this right now, this is, like, this is a screenshot of a work in progress that I did. Um, if you look here, you can see there's like buttons here. There's a little thing for the sound and stuff. But in this version over here, there's none of that. 
So the way I did this, this is a work in progress, and this is a way that I love working with. When I'm layering gradients on top of each other, sometimes I'll just use like a crazy color, like this green over here, just so I can orientate myself to where I am in um, on the picture. Um, to make these buttons over here, you can see what I did was I actually used radial gradients, and then they're literally just um, I'm using them to create the outline of the buttons. And the reason I use radial gradients as opposed to linear gradients was because I wanted that slight curve um, on the buttons that you can't really get with the linear gradients. And so with the layering of the radial gradients, um, I'm then just kind of layering them on top of each other, which is like in this picture over here, you have a, um, a gradient or like a linear gradient, and then you put another one on top and once you make that the same color, it gives the illusion of cutting out that shape, basically. So you just get that line. And that's something that is very useful when you're creating CSS art. So over here as well, you can see there's a long line, a, horror, a vertical line straight down here. And the way, and that makes up just the, um, just the line over here for the button. And how I um, covered that was I put two linear gradients one over here and then another one cutting up the other way just on top and that covers the line. It's still there, but it's covered as I'm layering gradients on top of each other. Um, that is like, literally the best way I can say to make this aside is literally layering things. When I did the this iPad, it was like the first time I'd ever used linear gradients, radio gradients. It was the first time I've ever done a CSS art. Uh, and I just kind of really wanted to challenge myself to do something that I'd literally never seen before. Um, and then I made it responsive as well. So as you can see, if I move this and make this screen smaller, it resizes. And the way to do that is using a, a using V min. You can see that just over here. And what that is, is that this unit is based on the viewport's smaller size. So everything I'm using is with percentages and vmin, and that helps to make it very responsive. And I think responsiveness is a very important thing, um, like topic. It's it helps make the web a bit more accessible. People who don't have access to, you know, to laptops and stuff are still able to view this work and your work um, on you know mobiles and everything. So that's the basis of it. And here's a transform as well, translate three D. So, um, yeah. the, so there, there's a couple of things I need to call out. Number one, just simply the fact that you said, yeah, so I wanted to challenge myself and I never tried this before. So I'm going to go ahead and just build this. Yeah, like I, I, I can get something to turn the right color for me. You go in <laughs> and you do this. That's that's outstanding, um, first of all. Um, the second thing that I want to call out, um, and I really want to highlight this, is um, is accessibility. That uh, I love the fact that, you know, you're you're you know, making sure that that really is like a, a part of what it is that, that you're building here. Um, because mm -hmm. a web that's that's not accessible to everybody is not accessible to anybody. So, you know, mm -hmm. making sure that that's a, a big part of what you're building, I think is is fantastic. The, uh, the last little thing then that I, I want to just ask is, um, how you're applying the the different layers is it just simply start from the top and work your way down where the the top is is ironically the the bottom layer and that each one then becomes a new layer how are the layers being applied there that's a really great question so i'm going to dig a little bit deeper into it here's the screen which is oh actually um yeah okay let's go over the screen so here's the um after pseudo element and we have this background here so as I, as I mentioned before, all of these are basically just layers. What is on the bottom is the top. So okay. luckily I've put comments, so I know exactly where everything is. If I comment this part out over here, and I need to add this little thing over here, you can see that that was just all those gradients over there that I've added for the screen. Now this white part, I don't know what it's called. I called it the white part and <laughs> comment that out and again it just takes that away so it's literally just building layers and layers on top of layers here's the home button comment that out that takes it away i can put this white part back on over here and the um home button isn't there but if i put the home button here back on sorry back to front um the screen is the bottom and 
um, the one at the top yeah. is on top. Sorry, my bad. Yep. Yeah. So if I move all this part, comment that out and put the screen back on, um, you see that this is what the screen looks like. Okay. And then okay. I layer the white part on top of that. Okay. So the top one is the top layer. The next one is the layer below that and so forth. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. That, 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 that actually makes a lot of sense. That's, that's fortunately then very logical. I, I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate yeah. that. Okay. So when you were talking like, like with this part over here, um, making these little buttons and stuff, that was extremely challenging. I didn't even think I could do it, honestly. I thought, okay, why? Let's just try, see if I could do it, because I didn't know how to make this. And it's literally just layers, layers on top of layers, cutting some parts out, reviewing part of it, cutting another part out to put everything else. So something that I really recommend doing when thinking about stuff like this is not just jumping into your code right away. I spent a lot of time just like literally just kind of doing this and thinking about how am I going to do it? And then in my head, I'm just like visualizing how parts like different layers will cut different other layers out and then trying it. So I spent a lot of time actually thinking about things before I jumped into the code because it was, like I said, like, it was really challenging. I didn't know I could do it. And I just kind of wanted to experiment and see if it was even possible, to be honest. That is very cool. That is very cool. Um, Come and Stoke um, over on Twitch mentions that uh, that the two of you are amazing that uh, struggle with normal art tools, let alone trying to do it in CSS. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely dig it. Thank cool. You. And then you also had another one, if I remember right. Or yeah. were you still talking about this one? Um, I do have another one over here. Um, let me just go into. So this is actually an animation. I've kind of commented out the animation because it's wrecking havoc on my processor right now <laughs> with everything. So I've taken that off. This is a little bit more simple. And the way the pseudo elements work here is that I'm using the pseudo elements, the before and after for the text, actually, the just start. And you can see that with pseudo elements, you have this content over here and you can change that. So for example, um, let's change this to web, web, Wednesday. I'm not sure if that will all fit in. I'm gonna have to change the height of that. There we go. Okay, I did have to change the height. But basically, um, when you add the content, that actually gives you, I really have to change a lot of things, I think that gives you the um that gives you access to the these um pseudo elements over here with the css art when you're looking at the before and after if my computer goes up okay the content there's nothing here because i'm not actually putting anything in the content i'm actually just using it for the background and then i'm you know using um I'm adding like the size and stuff of the content, but there's, there's actually nothing in the content. Whereas with this one, we have text in the content. So that's one way to do it, um, to use like the before after elements, pseudo elements. And it's very, very useful in normal day to day, your day to day work as well. So when you're looking into the, I've got all these stars over here and I'm just gonna go into a little bit of detail about how to do those. Uh, okay, stars, water. When you look at the gradient, and I'm using radio gradients over here, you can see that I'm using circle at, and then there's two percentages here. Now these two parameters basically, or arguments, um, represent the X axis first, and then the Y axis second. And so that's the placement of the circle. Then the next thing I did was GD for me just means gold dark, which is just the color that I called my color variable here. And the size of this circle is 0.08%, which is, yeah, the size of this one over here. And then ST is the variable for transparent. So what I've done is, um, so if I didn't use transparent, for example, like say I put a color, um, let's go black just so you can see what it looks like. You can see everything becomes black because what was black, what was transparent before is now black. Right, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so it was a circle with the color and then after everything else after that was transparent. 
And that's how you make light circles, and then you can layer the circles on top of each other to create CSS art, one div CSS art. That is that that is truly remarkable. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I love all of that. Um, and I also just, I, I, I do love the, you know, hey, I want to challenge myself. And, and I think that that is a great way to, uh, to, to learn is to find something mm -hmm. that is, is going to interest you, find something that's going to keep your attention, and then just try to build that. So I really like the, hey, I want to see if I can't do this, and then go out and, uh, and actually do it. So yeah. that's, uh, that's fantastic. Cool. It's also really fun to work with filters, by the way. You can like blur things. This is a bit more blurry, so I added filter here and um, make reduce the opacity. Um, mm. I didn't put the animation, but I will say if you're doing CSS animation, it's quite heavy on the processing, so it's a lot more experimental than useful in real world situations. But it's still <laughs> really fun to play around with. I dig it. Cool. So um, we've got just like a couple minutes left. What would you recommend somebody as as like next steps of like, hey, I want to go learn CSS? What would you What would you tell somebody to to get in and start playing around with? So there's some really really great tutorials online. Actually, um, that's how I started. I basically built one very simple CSS, and then once I got the basics, I was able to then go in and just build things from my imagination. I definitely recommend looking at documentation. I know everybody hates that, but it's actually really useful to knowing what certain like you know arguments and like, parameters do in the functions and stuff. And then you can really practice and um, change those and um, yeah, like make it your own and learn how to do it properly. It's it's fun, but there's a lot of nice tutorials and <laughs> stuff out there. Okay, all right, I dig it. Cool. Well, thank you both so much for, for joining in. Um, you can find um, um, Annie at uh, Annie Bombani. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Okay. And then uh, Ro at uh, Ro the Coder. Um, definitely go follow them on uh, on Twitter. Um, and thank you both so much for coming on and, and talking about CSS and highlighting what it is that, that you've built and helping us kind of learn along the way of some of the different things that uh, that are possible in, uh, in CSS. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. This was so much fun. And I'm so glad to see you again, Christopher. And as always, I love seeing Annie. So this was a <laughs> wonderful time. Thank you. It was my first time meeting you, Christopher, and I had a great time as well. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everybody for tuning in. Uh, this is Web Wednesday. We're here every, well, Wednesday talking about uh, different uh, odds and ends as far as web dev goes. Uh, come check us out. So yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye.